A number of things are happening in the world of Bible prophecy that I believe are very substantial. Before we talk about that, I uh, wanted to give you an update on some of the information that I found out regarding the three translations that I want to uh, bring to my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. I want to add um, French, Russian, and Arabic. As many of you know, I already have three languages uh, it is translated in, which is English, Spanish, and Mandarin Chinese, and soon to be a German. But I would like to add these other th three languages before the summer is out. Now, I did receive a uh, email from an individual who said that they might know somebody who speaks and writes Russian and might be willing to translate another version into Russian, but we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Make no mistake, to translate a book from English to another language is a daunting task and does take a lot of time. Now, I was planning on uh, translating my survival guide uh, by using some of the latest translation softwares, but uh, I look at some of the results and for the most part, many of the translation software companies still believe that you still need to have somebody uh, eyeball it to make sure that everything does turn out correctly. So that may be an option that I go, by, go through because another part of the research that I found out is that in order to have someone translate it uh, by hand, each translation would run somewhere around $500. So in order to have all three taken care of, it would cost somewhere around $1,500. And that would be each uh, translation is physically looked at and transcribed into the prospective language, like I said, uh, Russian, French, and Arabic. But if you feel like you would like to be a partner in this project, let me know. I uh, would. It'd be nice if we could have five people step up and give $100, which would be the necessary $500 for each translation. So in essence, we would have to have 15 people give $100. Or we could, you know, in another in other ways, we could do. Uh, of course, 30 people could do $50. But just think of it this way: to give a $50 or $100 donation toward this would be bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to a uh, certain people group, um, especially the Arabic, that would be somewhere uh, over a billion people. You could be play a part in uh, bringing the gospel through this Tribulation Period Survival Guide uh, once the rapture does take place. This, of course, would be a free downloadable uh, Tribulation Period Survival Guide that would be identical to the other four that are being uh, provided at this time. So I'd ask that you pray about it and see if that's something that you'd like to do. And if so, go to my uh, website and email me or uh, go down to the description section and that will take you right to my website. And then you can uh, send a message through that and I'll tell you how you can donate. The first thing that I want to uh, bring to you is that Israel and China are now collaborating together and definitely becoming more friendly. They've uh, they're in the process of putting together a free trade agreement. And the reason why they're doing this is because they can see that their U.S. partner is starting to distance itself from the United States or from, from Israel. And that certainly isn't good news for the future. That's going to be something I'm going to talk about in the second part of this video. And one of the things that China is uh, very eager to become a partner with Israel. Now, Israel is very, as you, as you know, is, is, a, is extremely technologically advanced in this world, and a lot of countries want their technology. But one thing that China is very eager to get a hold of, it says, it says China is eager to benefit from Israeli water technology. Northern China is facing mounting water scarcity over the next several decades because of chronic overuse, mismanagement, and uneven geographic distribution. This could hinder Chinese agricultural output. As a world leader in water management technology, I'm talking about Israel, including recycling, irrigation, and desalination uh, technologies, Israel is well equipped to help China mitigate the issue both by creating new sources of fresh water through desalinization and by helping to uh, make water use more efficient. Now here's where the distancing of the U.S. comes in. Besides the economic benefits of an FTA, uh, which is free trade agreement, for Israel, the deal is also about diversifying its political relationships. The West is becoming more politically distant from Israel, and the boycott, uh, divestment, and sanctions movement, which calls for economic actions in what it says is a nonviolent struggle against Israeli occupation, 
is gaining prominence in, in Europe. Israel is looking uh, to work more closely with other partners and move away from the, its reliance on the United States. The process is already underway. Last year, two Chinese companies won tenders uh, to build a port in Ashdod and operate another port in Haifa. And that certainly does not bode well for what could happen uh, just before Mr. Obama leaves office. As you well know, the French are now trying to spearhead uh, a call for peace talks between the Israelis and the Palestinians through their French peace, Middle East peace plan. Now here's something that's being reported by the Times of Israel that I think could, could turn out to be very prophetic. And it's entitled PM, which is talking about Prime Minister Netanyahu, Israel ready to work with Arab states on peace process. And reading from the article, it says, Netanyahu welcomed remarks by Egyptian President El Sisi, uh, who said in a live televised statement earlier in the day that he saw a real opportunity for an Israeli-Palestinian peace settlement that would also lead to warmer ties between Egypt and the Jewish state. Israel is already or is ready to participate with Egypt and other Arab states in advancing both the diplomatic process and stability in the region, Netanyahu said in a statement. I appreciate President El Sisi's uh, work and am encouraged by the leadership he has shown on this important issue. In a rare direct appeal to Palestinians and Israelis, Sisi had urged the two peoples to draw hope from the real and stable peace between Israel and Egypt. There is an Arab initiative, there is, a current, and there is currently a French initiative, and there are American efforts to broker an Israeli-Palestinian settlement, he said. His speech came hours after Paris announced that a Middle East peace conference initially slated to uh, take place in the coming weeks would be postponed to ensure the U.S. would be able to attend. But despite the uh, delay, France has made it clear that they continue to move forward uh, with the peace process. Expressing uh, support for the French proposal, CC added that Egypt is prepared to make every effort to con contribute to an Israeli-Palestinian settlement. The Egyptian leader urged Israeli parties and leaders to please reach an agreement so a solution can be found and called for a real reconciliation and quickly between Palestinian factions offering Cairo's full support. If we are able to, all of us together, with, an effort, with, e with effort and a real will and devotion, find a solution for this issue and find hope for the Palestinians and security for the Israelis, I am telling you a new page will be written, he said. You know, this sounds a lot like what the Bible says what, that it would, would be in the final uh, peace process, that it would be a peace with many. In 1979, Egypt became the first Arab country to sign a peace deal with Israel. Now, this is Sisi talking. He said, maybe some people can say this peace is not warm. I tell you, or I tell them, a warmer peace will be achieved if we were able to resolve the issues of our Palestinian brothers. And, you know, that's what a lot of the uh, Arab rulers have said, that if, in fact, Israel can come to peace with the Palestinians, that they would open up their arms to Israel and reconcile, reconcile. Now the French summit, which is set to include uh, representatives from 20 countries, including Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Jordan, was due to take place on May 30th, but was postponed by France so that uh, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry would be able to attend. The French Foreign Ministry said in a statement that a new date at the beginning of June will be set soon. Now, Israeli opposition leader Isaac Herzog also praised the announcement and, and said that, uh, I welcome the announcement, he said. This is a dramatic announcement that shows the possibility of a historic, pro historic process. It is our duty to examine it seriously. Otherwise, we will find ourselves doing so after the uh, next funeral. It is vital to listen to the Egyptian president and take a serious and responsible look at this opportunity. Now, I don't have any doubt that this very well could be the peace process that the Bible talks about in Daniel 9.27. And although I do believe that uh, many of the major moderate Arab world leaders will be involved, ultimately this peace process will come through the European Union. And as it seems to be, the United States seems to be drifting away from taking the lead point on this peace process. It very well may, may be France that does ultimately 
represent the uh, European Union in bringing this peace process to fruition. Now, certainly we don't know who will ultimately be the one to uh, bring it to pass. The Bible says that uh, once the rapture takes place, that the man of sin will be brought forth, and that is when the uh, uh, seven-year peace accord will be played out, I believe, uh, in an umbrella agreement that will encompass many of the people and players uh, in the Middle East. And as I've said many times, I think it will encompass not only uh, Iran, but also uh, Syria and Yemen. And I believe that many of the modern Arab world leaders will embrace Israel and will reconcile. And certainly everything will go along smoothly for a little while. But we know at some point in time that peace will be taken from the earth. But before that happens, I look for the United States to, to play a minor role or a back of a, a secondary role, role in bringing peace to the Middle East. And I think that it's going to be either France or some other European country that, to, for which the Antichrist will rise up through. And he will be able to convince not only uh, the European Union but also the Arab world to join him in a historical peace agreement. Now, the only question is, is this the opportunity that we're staring at right now? Is this the opportunity in which this peace process will finally come? Well, personally, if I were to speculate, I would say yes, it is. Now, whether or not this will go uh, through without a hiccup is another question. But the Bible is clear that at some point in time that all the hiccups will be removed and peace will come and, he will, and it will come through the Antichrist. And certainly this is a question that each and every one of us whether we're Christians or not, need to be concerned about for two reasons. Number one, if you don't know the Lord, you are playing with eternal fire. You know, 150,000 people die every single day. The Bible says that the vast majority of them will end up in a burning hell. If you die without Jesus today, the, the, the very moment you do, you'll end up in a burning hell. Don't let that happen to you. You need to come to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. And Christians, you know people and friends and loved ones who are going to end up in the tribulation period unless they have a 11th hour confession and conversion to the Lord Jesus. But if, in fact, they don't, they need a handbook that will get them through the next seven years. Because I can guarantee you that if you allow and let the world tell your lost friend or loved one how they need to react to this uh, situation and what is going on in the world, they're going to tell them eventually to bow down and to worship the beast. That's why I wrote the tri my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. That's why it's free and written in, uh, to be four different languages. It will ultimately reach a, an audience of over two billion people. And I would like to raise that to somewhere around three and a half billion. And the best part about this book is that it's free. All you have to do is download it. It's the same book that you would get if, in fact, you were to buy the paperback version. And yes, there is a paperback version that you can purchase and you can deliver and hand it to your lost loved one. You know, they may laugh and snicker about it at first, but I guarantee you once the rapture takes place, they're going to look high and low for this book. So whichever version you uh, decide to get, I would encourage you to do so quickly because your time may very well be running out. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.